Welcome back to the sawmill, everybody. Today on the mill, I've got a little pine, it's 16 foot long. Uh, it's just 12 inch on the small end. Uh, this is a uh, log I need sawed up into some four by fours. Um, I put some doors on the sawmill shed and I need uh, four or four by fours to do that. So I'm gonna get this thing sawed up real quick so they can start drying out so we can use them on the sawmill shed. This little pine really isn't quite 12 inch on the small end. It measures that, but if you notice, it's got a swell where there's a knot cluster right there at the end. Um, in the video right there, you can see the dark spot in the middle is actually where the pith is, which is fairly centered in this on both ends. Ideally, what I'd like to do is square this up and be able to get four four by fours out of it, true four inch by four inch, and have the pith boxed out in a board in the middle. So like take two two by four by fours off, a two by down the middle, and then two more four by fours, but there's just not gonna be enough material in this log. It's the only log that I had that was the length that I need now this log is a full 16, like two or three long. And this mill is designed to cut 16 foot material. It'll technically cut 16 eight from just barely dragging the log on the one end on the teeth to just barely getting the back side of the blade out at the other end of the log. So this log is about as long as you can mill on this little LT30. Um, I decided to go ahead and use it the way it was because my door opening is uh, just under 15 foot and I wanted to see how it would be trying to get this little over 16 foot log onto the mill with the, the mill inside the building. When I designed the building that way I thought well if I ever do need to cut 16 foot material I can just move the mill outside the building, but I'd sure hate to have to move the mill out for just this one log. Kind of catch back up, we just took the first uh, slab cut off of this, turned it 90 degrees, and uh, we're going to take the second slab off, and if you look really careful, you can tell that this log has a bit of a bow to it, the way it's sitting right now, it's got the ends pointed up, I, I call that the horns up. Um, so this slab is gonna be kind of deep on both ends and kind of thin in the middle. Throwing these slabs back out the door is kind of troublesome. Um, with it being 16 foot and the door less than that, I can't just slide them off and down onto the loader arm. I've got to turn them and kind of throw them out back out the door diagonally. If I'd have had a chainsaw out warmed up, it wouldn't have been too big a deal to cut them two or three pieces. Of course, it would have slowed the video down just a little bit. But I'm going to put some doors on tracks so the doors will be hanging. There'll be four doors to cover up two door openings um, on this sawmill shed. So that's a 30 foot opening with one center post. So there's going to be uh, those four by fours that I'm going to mount the hardware that's going to hang the doors on the slides. So because I don't think that I can get four four by fours and box the heart out into something else, uh, what I'm trying to do here is take a piece of lumber off of the side and hopefully get four four by fours out of it and box the heart into one of those four by fours. Of course, it'll be real close to the edge of boxing it on one side and splitting it on the other. But what I just cut off of here was a full one by, you know, in order to box the heart, I would have needed to put it in at least a two by. 
uh, is this this small and high up on the tree the fish surely wanders around a bit now that we've got the two slabs and uh, fletch cut off we're going to roll this thing over onto our third face and uh, see if we can't get another slab cut off of it watching this hydraulic machine on the video trying to turn this log looks like it's really slow going but it is so much easier and faster to do it this way than it is to get a cant hook and try to muscle it around and get it done now that we've got this log turned to our third face we're going to make this next cut and this is going to really start locking us in on what we can and can't do with this log especially being that we're trying to get four four before out of this little thing so i'm coming down checking where my laser is sitting on this end that is crooked downward at the moment uh, trying to see how far out i'm going to make it i don't technically need four or four befores out of this if i can yield three that are the full 16 foot long i'll have what i need or if some of them try to crook on me uh, i may need part of that fourth one to make up because i just need a total of 45 feet out of this log to try to keep the video from being quite so long i have edited some little pieces out on the cut and the return of the sawmill head on this video since we're cutting a full 16 foot length uh, just to try to shorten the video up a little bit. I know most of you are probably looking at that thinking, well, he needs to take another fletch cut off of that just to get down to squaring it up. But I'm trying to leave as much material on here as possible just in case they start moving around on me. When I say moving, I mean mowing or crooking um, as I cut them loose out of the can. Uh, so I'm trying to leave just a little extra material so I can take some skim cuts and possibly clean and square them back up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and roll this thing one more time and take another slab cut off and see how that starts looking. So I suppose that this can't is just the wrong size for the backstops on this thing because it really didn't want to slide over them. I almost had to run the clamp under it and pull it back to get it to drop off of it. Now that we've got it turned and clamped back up, we're going to take this last slab cut off and see how it starts looking. This thing just sure didn't look like it had much crook to it when I had it out in the yard. I picked it up with the tractor and going to bring it in to put it on the mill. But the further we process this, the more crooked it appears to be. We got this slab cut loose and it looks like it didn't hardly cut half of it. So we're gonna have to go back and uh, cut a fletch cut off of there just to try to get some more slab off of this end. But at least we can use that one by for something down the road. If you can tell where the pith is on this end of the log, it's uh, down toward the log deck at the moment. Uh, so I was trying to stay as shallow as I could with this top cut so that I could keep that pith in the lower two 4 by 4s So that was why I took such a shallow slab cut and kind of missed and having to do it again. Now that we got this flitch cut knocked off of here, I think we'll be squared up enough and about as small a size as we can get by with to split it into two and get our four by four started here. I was really hoping to not have quite this much wane on some of these four by fours, but it is what it is. I didn't realize this log was this crooked. Well, that fletch cut that we just peeled off of here took us down to the eighth and the sixteenth roughly. Uh, from the log deck up so we have no more room on this so we're just going to split it right down the middle
as I get to the end of this cut, you can see that the top half of this cant pulls over toward the operator side. Uh, that happens because it's sitting on the blade, which means that it's tried to bow up slightly in the middle and down on both ends. Now, if you've been keeping up with it, the pith right now is in the bottom half toward the camera a little bit. It's that dark spot. So now that we've rotated them up, it is on the piece that's facing the camera a little higher than center in it. Uh, so we're going to drop the blade down four inches on this and take four, two of the four by fours off. I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video, but today I'm using a seven degree blade on the sawmill. But once I get down to the end of this cut, you can see that I did manage to get underneath the pith and trap it into that one four by four, but just barely, and it's over in kind of the corner. So this closest top four by four did crook on us over toward the operator as you can see right there in that close up it's kind of in the damp bottom left hand corner the first one that I'm off bearing here seems to be nice and straight in both directions these old things is pretty heavy being 16 foot long so I'm kind of using the tire on the sawmill as a fulcrum we'll walk it off of here onto some dunnage I've got laying in the floor when we made the first cut that split this cant in two, it relieved just a little bit of tension that was in it. When we've made the second cut in this, we've definitely relieved some tension. But you can see there, it not only crooked over to the side, but it bowed up in the middle just a little bit. Of course, these are full 16 foot long, so they're not too hard to bend them back into straight. I doubt you could go to the lumber yard and buy 16 foot 4 by 4s that were any straighter. Cutting those top ones off of the ones that are left kind of relieved the tension in those as well. They've crooked just a little bit on me. Fortunately, I've got a little material left in them that I can trim them down with and get them back true before I size them to the final size. Well, if you noticed in the middle of that, I released the clamp and tightened it back up because I wanted the cans that are left to relax and not be held down by the clamp on the mill so that they do what they want to do. That way, I, when I clamp them back, I can trim off how they're going to be without being fastened to the sawmill anymore. As it turns out, they were just crooked there on the operator end of the pants. They were pretty true from halfway down. So now I know I've got a pretty true edge where the blade is. So I'm going to unclamp these and flip them over because these are nice square edges on this side. I'm going to flip them over because I, I know that I've got some weighing on it least one if not both of these on the bottom so we're going to flip them over and size them down to the four inches from that side because I, I think I've got a, a four by five cant right now uh, this one's presenting like it's still got just a little bit of tension in it it's just barely floating off of the center log bunk so hopefully when we cut this inch off of the outside of both of these, that that kind of evens up the tension and they flatten out completely. Now for sure I could have cut a deeper slab or fletch cut off of this, whichever it would have been, and got all the way down to the size that we needed to start with. But then I sure wouldn't have had any options to clean them up and square them up any better now. And I could have took both of these at one time right now, but I elected to take them one at a time um, just so that I could tell exactly what was going on. 
the one I'm cutting first doesn't appear to have any tension in it at all. It's laying nice and flat right now. But that second one that I just moved, it appears to have a fair bit of tension left in it. If you watch my right hand when I get this cut started, I'm playing with this uh, one by four roughly that we're cutting off of here, feeling whether it has any movement going on in it, what kind of tension it has. Is it pulling down to the cant or is it trying to ride up off of the cant? I actually have a little bit more material in here. I think I've got enough to cut a one by off of here, so I'm trying to gauge whether I should cut it off of this side or whether I should cut it, flip it and cut it off of the other side is I'm not really interested in these one buys. I'm more interested in getting some pretty good straight four by fours out of this fairly crappy log. We're going to get the head of the mill backed up here, release this, flip it over, and see if we can size this thing down now to where we get a uh, full one by and a full four by four out of it. Of course, the four by four is going to have some weighing on it. But I decided to flip it, try to keep any tension that's in it, because I've already got a, a bow going in this thing. I really don't want to have a bow and a crook going on in it. These four befores, for the purpose I'm using them, I'm going to hang them on the ceiling joists in this building, which is five foot center. So if I can make anything in five foot increments out of this, so five, 10, 15 foot, uh, any of those will work. So this one, if I use it for that purpose, will probably end up and be a 10-footer instead of a 15-footer. Now we'll get the mill head backed up out of the way and get this uh, four by four off of here. Be kind of hard to off bear it where I'm trying to go with it with the mill head in the way where it was at. Looking at that one laying there, it's laying pretty nicely on the log bunks. Uh, it does have a little bow to the side, but I think it'll be usable, especially if we trim it down to 10 foot. Now we'll get this last one back up on the mill, see what we can do with it. It's trying to be a little bit ornery. Let me get over here and shove it up on the mill. You might be able to tell getting this one back up on the mill, it's got a bit of a crook to it. It's uh, crooked downward on both ends right now. I've got the horns down. So we're going to try to cut some of the backside off of this and release some tension in it. Hopefully, get it to relax on us. We ended up sawing the pith out of this one. If it were here, it would be in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, but I think the problem is we're just too close to the pith in it. There is definitely some tension going on in this one. I don't know if you noticed, but when I came out of the cut, the one before that I cut off popped up on this end. This last cut we're making here is going to be the final move, so what we're going to do is flip this thing over where we get that uh, near the pith wood to the top use the clamp to pull it down flat onto the log deck and cut as much as we can afford to off near the pith and get this thing to hopefully relax on us. Hey, now would be a really great time to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you stuck around this long, you might as well go ahead and subscribe. I'm fixing to shut the mill down for the day, so what I always do is spray my guide rollers uh, with diesel fuel with the 
mill running wide open and uh, that lubricates that blade, gets the water off of it, cleans the, any sap that is building up on it. Um, of course, I always at the end of the day pull my blade off and pull my belts off, uh, hang all that on the wall. Since I'm done for the day, you'd have thought that I'd have shut that mill off before i done anything else, but I'm actually letting it run charging the battery for just a few minutes before I shut it down. I like to try to top the battery all the way off, especially in the cold winter. We've got some cold weather coming. Typically, we don't get down much below about 20 on the average in the winter time, but uh, we've got temperatures coming that are supposed to be at or near zero for several days and highs that don't get above freezing. So I may or may not pull the battery off of the mill for the week. Well, I did manage to get the four four by fours out of that little log. I did manage to get the pith in one of the four by fours. One of them's got a little bit more weighing on it than I would have liked. And one of them's got just a little bit of a crook to it, but overall some pretty decent four before us.